Hello and welcome dear viewers to the video on practical examples for dissolution specification for extended release formulations. So in this video we will see how to set the dissolution specifications for extended release formulations which are also called as or known as modified release formulations, sustained release formulations, prolonged release formulations and the terminologies like XR, ER or XL these are used for these modified release type of formulations. So let's start with the video. See the specifications for dissolution are designed considering the bioequivalence batch or the clinical study batch and for extended release type of formulations minimum three time points are required for dissolution specification so initial time point will be the time point at which the formulation releases 20 to 30 percent of the drug or you can consider around 25 percent of the drug then middle time point will be there at which the formulation releases around 50 percent of the drug and the end time point or final time point or final phase will be the time point at which the formulation releases 80 percent of the dose if your api content of the formulation is for example let's say 100 mg then at initial time point it will release around 25 mg then middle time point around 50 mg and end time it should release the complete dose that is around 80 percent or 80 percent above and why these three time points are considered the answer to this is this question is initial time point is to have the understanding about the drug release from formulation like it is releasing the loading dose or it is releasing the initial dose which is required to start the action that means around 25 percent of the drug releases and the body starts absorbing that drug so that the blood plasma concentration level is achieved to start the pharmacological activity or you can say it is a initial loading dose then it will start releasing the maintenance dose slowly then around 50 percent release and it is in the midi middle time point and why this is required it is required to check whether the release profile or the extended design is maintained or not and the last time point is that at which the 80 percent above drug is released that means the extended release formulation is not holding the much amount of api and it is releasing the complete dose Another reason for having the initial time point is to check whether the dose is being dumped or not. So generally three time points are considered. Always remember first time point is for starting the pharmacological activity you can say or loading dose and also at initial time point the dose dumping is checked. In the middle time point the release profile is maintained or not that is checked and at the last time point whether the drug is released completely or not that is checked so minimum requirement is three time points and based on the formulations more time points can be added you can go for two middle time points also so let's let's have a practical example here Consider the conventional ER formulation with the 
release of API or drug for around 12 hours. The dissolution specifications as I have mentioned are based on to the dissolution or drug release that is happening or that is studied with the bio batch. So mean drug dissolved with 12 units that is used as a dissolution data to make the dissolution specifications. Let's say as a hypothetical example I have given here one hour the drug release is 20%. The average release is 20%. Then bio batch plus minus 10% can be given as a specification and that is the regulatory guidelines requirement. So 20% minus 10% will be 10% and 20% plus 10% will be 30%. So now your range, range is 20 to 30%. And always remember the ER type of formulation, dissolution specification will have a range for release. So another is not more than 30 percent. This criteria can also be considered and if you are using the second dissolution specification that is not more than 30 percent that means if the formulation is releasing more than 30 percent that means some some somewhat there is a dose is being dumped. That's why this one hour release is specified. Then six hours. So consider six hours the drug release is 55 percent. Now once again plus minus 10 percent criteria should be applied. It will be 45 percent to 65 percent. And the range will be 45 to 65 percent and let's say at 12 hours the release is 95 percent. So as we have seen in the IR formulation dissolution specification practical example here you can apply that criteria at the end phase of the dissolution 95 minus 10 is equal to 85 and simply you can give the 80 percent release specification. So I hope you are understanding the requirements and the logic behind this specification and acceptance criteria for dissolution for the extended release type of formulations. Let's take the second example. Here consider that your formulation is containing the loading dose and the maintenance dose. So similarly at 20, 30 minutes 25 percent release is happening. That's why initial loading dose is released with the amount of 25 percent of the label claim. So you can give the specification acceptance criteria as 20 as 25 minus 10. 25 plus 10 that is 35 so 15 to 35 will become your specification and consider at 6 hours you are getting 60 percent release so it is around 50 percent so 50 to 70 percent will become your specification or if you are getting 50 percent release as 5 hours then you can make that specification also then at 8 hours complete release is happening and that's why you can give a specification of 80 percent at 8 hours. Now take an example of extended release formulation with IR release type of combination. Consider a tablet formulation which is combination of IR and ER release or your capsule containing the IR pellets and the ER pellets. 
bilayer tablet with ir layer and er layer so like this the example 3 is given ir drug release is 95% at 30 minutes so directly you can apply the ir dissolution specification logic that is 95 minus 10 it will become 85 and simply you can give the q point limit as not less than 80% of the drug is dissolved within 30 minutes and for the second layer that is er layer you can apply the logics for extended release type of formulation dissolution specification 30 minutes 25 percent 6 hours 60 percent 8 hours release is 98 percent so simply for 30 minutes your specification will become 15 to 35 then at 6 hours it will become 50 to 70 and at 8 hours it will become not less than 80 percent so this is a hypothetical example instead of 6 hours you can consider 5 hours and you can consider the average release of 50 percent then your limit will become 40 to 60 percent so this is regarding the dissolution specification for extended release type of formulations which are also known as prolonged release sustained release controlled release or other terminologies can be considered so thank you for watching the video and i am very happy to see the viewers are getting benefited from these videos and the viewers are learning and i am also glad to read the comments provided by you people thank you kindly do like share and subscribe to this channel